In lesson 1.4, students applied the ideas of evaporation and condensation in the context of the water cycle. Students make a model of a body of water and a cold atmosphere with the idea that evaporating water will rise and cool, condense, and rain in a cycle well known as the water cycle. The activity really centers around why this happens, what's the physical process of evaporation and condensation, and the idea that you can represent a huge system using a model on a small scale. So to make the model, you basically have a container, like a deli sized container. You put some water in the bottom, just room temperature water, cover it with plastic wrap, and secure it with a rubber band, and then put some ice on top. The idea is for students to understand that this small model represents a huge system of water in an ocean or other very large body of water and the atmosphere above which as you get higher and higher gets colder and colder. So after students make their water cycle model it's going to have to sit there for about 15 minutes or so before they have observable results. So during that time you can talk about evaporation, how it happens, and condensation and that there's an important cycle of water on the earth. So first you can take a look at evaporation. Evaporation happens over a wide range of temperatures but that heating water does increase the rate of evaporation. So the animation shows a puddle of water and it's a sunny day so let's see what happens. The puddle shrinks and the question is why? Well students should understand that the water is made up of water molecules and as the sun heats the water, the molecules move faster and evaporate at a faster rate. Eventually the entire puddle is gone. And the flip side of evaporation is condensation where water vapor that has evaporated cools, the water molecules slow down, come together and join and form tiny droplets of liquid water. There's also an animation you can show students to this effect. Here students see the familiar situation where they have like ice water or cold liquid inside a cup where water molecules in the air, just regular water vapor that's normally in the air because the air is always somewhat humid, cools down when it gets near the cup. When it's cold enough the water molecules join together and form tiny droplets of liquid water on the outside of the cup. So after looking at the illustrations and animations, you can have students go back to their model and remove the ice from the top and take a look at the inside of the plastic wrap. And kids will notice that it looks wet and then they can use a brown paper towel to be absolutely sure that there's moisture on the inside. So the question is, where did it come from? You want them to use the information they picked up in talking about evaporation and condensation to answer this question. So the animation shows the exact setup that students have with the water in the bottom, the ice on top, and the plastic wrap. You want students to understand that water molecules evaporated from the water that was in the bottom of the container, rose up into the space in the container, and then when they contacted the colder plastic wrap on top, which represents the upper atmosphere, they slowed down and collected there in tiny drops of water that's condensation. So the full water cycle happens within this container. You can also show students a desalination device. It's the idea that what would you do if you only had salt water, if you were stranded on an island in the ocean and you needed to drink fresh water instead of salt water, what could be done? Kids should be able to reason that you might be able to take salt water, allow the water to evaporate, leave the salt behind, and have that evaporated water condense and fall into a some kind of a cup or container so you could get fresh water. And there's a, uh, a link here that discusses desalination. The Next Generation Science Standards, Standard 5 PS11, says develop a model to describe that matter is made of particles too small to be seen. Well in the context of evaporation and condensation, kids see that a water is made up of water molecules that of course are too small to be seen and that the whole water cycle depends on those processes of evaporation and condensation. In the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, 
developing and using models, well, that's what students do here. They create a model of the ocean and the atmosphere. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, the idea that matter can be subdivided into particles very, very small. They see water molecules. They begin to understand the process of evaporation and condensation in the water cycle. In the cross-cutting concepts of scale, proportion, and quantity, students see that natural objects exist from the very small to the immensely large. Well, actually, this lesson kind of combines both ideas, that you can see something on a huge scale, like the water cycle for the Earth, but you can represent it in a model on your desk, and you can even look further down into the water molecules that either evaporate or condense to drive the water cycle. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.